Geologists call it halite. Chemists call it sodium chloride. The rest of us just call it salt. It's in nearly everything from our blood to this stone, and it has 14,000 known uses. Some refer to salt as the fifth element, as essential to our world as earth, air, fire, and water. But what is salt? While there is a technical chemical definition of salt, what we'll be talking about is the ever-present compound, sodium chloride. The sodium is a metal, the chloride a halogen, and the ratio is about 40% sodium and 60% chloride. They come together and form an ionic bond. When multiple sodiums and chlorides come together, they form a cube. When multiple cubes come together, they form a crystal as we're accustomed to seeing in nature. So what talents does this little crystal have? Salt is hygroscopic, a fancy word that means it attracts water. Salt dissolves pretty easily in water. Once dissolved, it breaks up into its positively charged sodium ions and its negatively charged chloride ions. That makes it infinitely useful in chemical applications. Salt lowers the freezing temperature of water, making it great for de-icing winter roads. But it also rusts vehicles and bridges in the process. The most obvious use of salt is in our food, where it's both a luxury because it tastes good and a necessity because it's an amazing preservative. What sets salt apart from some other resources is that it's naturally recyclable, so we're never going to run out. If you think about it, the salt on your eggs or on the sidewalk could be millions of years old. So where does salt come from? Salt crystals develop from evaporating salt water, ocean water, uh, from dried ocean beds. This looks like a dried ocean bed, doesn't it? Many millions of years ago, after the Earth's surface cooled, centuries of rainfall turned puddles into oceans. The ocean floors were littered with sedimentary rock, which is full of sodium. Meanwhile, chloride spewed from volcanoes and hydrothermal vents. Still, the amount of salt content in these early oceans was likely pretty low. It took billions of years of water runoff, eroding rock, dissolving the salt, and carrying it into the oceans to create the saltiness we know today. Though it varies by location, seawater is roughly 3.5% salt. That translates to about a quarter pound of salt per gallon of seawater, or a total of nearly 50 quadrillion tons of salt in all the Earth's oceans. Okay, so how do we get all that salt out of all that seawater? Harvesting sea salt on a grand scale requires some serious patience. The other key to this process, location, location, location. You're located on Great Inagua Island, the most southerly island in the Hama chain. Great Inagua is approximately 500 miles southeast of Miami, Florida. At Modern Bahamas Limited, we have a unique partnership with nature. Aside from having access to a limitless supply of salty seawater, this location is ideal for other reasons. The requirements are high incidence of uh, solar energy, as you can see, we out here in the sun, uh, a steady but not strong wind, low rainfall, uh, high evaporation, large land area. In some parts of the world, salt lakes or oceans evaporated with zero help from us, resulting in salt flats, big exposed beds of salt. Utah's Great Salt Lake is a salt flat in the making, as is the Dead Sea in the Middle East. You can find salt-encrusted seabeds in California's Death Valley and at the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah. Here, in a salt flat in Bolivia, salt is collected right off the surface, just as people have been doing for thousands of years. Today, salt has many uses, but in the beginning, it was all about food and survival. We've known about salt's preservative properties ever since uh, the cavemen. And so men have been locating their settlements near salt works. 
Well, the human body is actually a machine. It's an electrical machine, and electrical impulses move into and out of the cells over the cell membranes, and that transmission is facilitated by the sodium. Salt is comprised of sodium, which is an alkali, and chloride, which is uh, uh, chlorine. So really, the industry gets its name chloralkali from salt itself. Most people think of salt as common table salt, but when mixed with water and electricity is passed through that salt water solution, you get compounds like chlorine, caustic soda, and hydrogen, which are essential building blocks in everything from food to clean drinking water to pharmaceuticals. Every year in the U.S., we produce about 12.7 million tons of chlorine. Chlorine's molecular outer shell is missing one electron, giving it a unique ability to bind with other elements and compounds. This makes it extremely useful in all kinds of industrial applications. Chlorine specifically is really known due to its disinfectant properties. It's been used for well over 100 years in the U.S. for providing purified drinking water to millions of people. Well over 85% of agricultural crop protection products use chlorine in their manufacturing process, but it actually has hundreds of other uses and winds up in many other products. You name it, there's likely some form of chlorine chemistry used to make it. On the other side of the membrane is the caustic soda. As the name implies, it's probably not wise to touch this stuff in its raw state because it can burn. Caustic soda is another name for sodium hydroxide. It has a number of important uses. It's used as a raw material in soaps and detergents. It's also used in the uh, pulp and paper industry to break down the pulp to make paper. The U.S. industry produces about 13.3 million tons of caustic soda every year, and that equates to about 21 million tons of salt consumed to make those products. After all that effort went into splitting salt apart, there's something else made at this plant that involves a reunion of sorts. Just add water. Bleach is produced by combining chlorine caustic back together and it's important as a disinfectant in keeping our food safe in that it disinfects the surfaces that come in contact with our food, um, not only in our house, but also in restaurants and also in, in healthcare facilities. Salt has been used since antiquity as a preservative. So before there was refrigeration, people salted meat and they salted fish. Prior to modern geology and industrialization, if you didn't live near the ocean, procuring salt was an arduous proposition. This made salt precious. Trade routes were set up to haul it from mines and coastal regions. Salt was valuable in ancient Rome because it was used to preserve rations on long journeys. If you read the Gospel of St. Matthew, St. Matthew says, quoted Jesus telling his disciples, you are the salt of the earth with a double meaning, basically, having a life with salt, with, with interest, and also being the savior of the people, of the humanity. It's impossible to imagine that we could live without salt, and that's why our watchword is salt, the essence of life. Evaporating seawater is just one of the ways we get our salt fix. A dash here, a pinch there. The salt we eat comprises less than 15% of all the salt produced worldwide. But it's the salt with which we're most familiar, thanks to that unmistakable taste. But why do we eat salt at all? It's an essential nutrient, and an essential nutrient is defined as one that our body doesn't make itself. So if we don't take salt in, we compromise our health. The body contains about 0.15% salt by mass. So for a 50 kilogram human, about 110 pounds, that works out to 75 grams of salt, or seven tablespoons. Salt is an electrolyte that keeps our cells, muscles, and nervous system working. Because when you come right down to it, we run on electricity. Electrolytes act as the electrical conductor that allows our nerve endings to fire, our muscles to move, and our thoughts to form. Well, the human body is actually a machine. It's an electrical machine, and electrical impulses move into and out of the cells over the cell membranes, and that transmission is facilitated by the sodium. 
If that's true, could salt water act as a conductor connecting two electrodes, lighting this light bulb? Pure water doesn't complete the electrical circuit. I'm going to add a small amount of household salt. There goes the stir bar, and there is the light. As it goes into solution, the water separates the sodium and the chloride ions, and they allow the electrons to flow from one side to the other, completing the circuit, lighting our light bulb. We naturally recycle most of the salt that we use. We, for example, put salt on the roads to keep the winter roads safe. And that will run off into the streams, into the rivers, and back to the ocean.